Hey gang, in the video description below, I'll leave a link to the blog post that I wrote recently about streaming to YouTube or Twitch. In that, I made mention of an application called OBS Studio, which is what I use to do all of my streaming and recording. I figured I'd put together this little video to show you how I'm doing that, what settings I use, and the reasoning for those settings. Now note that some of these things might not apply to your setup. You'll probably need to customize things and experiment a bit to figure out what works. But with any luck, this video can serve as a nice little springboard for that. Now let's get to the app. Before we do that though, we're gonna get a bit of troubleshooting right out of the way before it can rear its ugly head. Primarily the issue of OBS not displaying or recording your gameplay properly. A lot of those problems can be fixed by running OBS in administrator mode. Simply find where the OBS 6.4 application is, back click on it, go to properties, go to the compatibility tab, check run this program as an admin, and hit OK. Now whenever you start OBS 64, it'll pop up in admin mode, and it'll probably work right. When you start OBS for the first time, you're not going to see some of these things that you're seeing here on my, my screen. You will see a scene one, that is default. We'll just ignore that. The sources box are going to be, it's going to be empty. But we need a game capture because that's how you're going to record your gameplay. So we'll hit plus, we're going to get down to game capture and add it. As opposed to me doing that, since I've already got one, I'll just open mine up so we can see the, the, the settings here. <laughs> I, I leave everything as default except capture third party overlays. I check that. When I'm playing games, I have an application in the background called PlayClaw. That allows me to display my CPU load and temps, GPU load and temps, and my TeamSpeak channel status. I want to record all of that. So I check that box, I'll hit the OK button. Now let's pause for a second here and take a note at the second source that I have enabled. And that's called Display Capture. Why am I doing that? Well, I'm, using, I'm actually using OBS to record this video right now. I'm recording a video of a video of a video of a video of a video. It'll go infinitely. Normally, you wouldn't have that here, so don't worry about adding that for you. We're going to ignore the mixer section here. We'll come back to that later. We're going to go over to settings now here on the right side. For general, I just leave everything as default. The stream panel, fill in whichever streaming service you use. I use YouTube, you use Twitch, whichever. It's all up to you. This output tab, we're going to skip and come back to him later. He's really important and we're going to spend a lot of time on him. So we'll go down to audio. I overdo this a bit and I'll explain why. First, I set the sample rate to 48 kilohertz. I leave the channels to stereo and the desktop device to default. On my system, the default sound output device is my Sound Blaster ZXR, specifically its headphone jack. That's all set in the Windows Sound Preference panel and the Sound Blaster control panel. Ultimately, it just means Record any sound that's, that the PC is playing, which in my case will be applications such as TeamSpeak, Discord, Rainbow Six Siege, Battlefield 1, etc. The second desktop device doesn't exist, so I have that disabled. I have two microphone devices set up, and they're both the same device. My default one in Windows. In my case, that's the RCA inputs on the aforementioned Sound Blaster card, which are fed from my Mackie mixer which is where my microphone is attached to. Did you follow all that? Microphone to mixer to sound card. I have two, and I'll explain that some more when I get to the output section and the mixer section. For now, mic two has push to mute enabled, and mic one has push to talk enabled. For the desktop audio, I just leave it on all the time. Again, I'll explain that momentarily, just please bear with me. Video tab. I play on a 1440p display, so I have the base or canvas size set accordingly. I also record in 1440p, so I have the output line set identically. The downscale filter in my case is left to default because I'm not scaling any output. I play and record in the same size. However, if you decide you want to scale, 
Let's say you're playing in 4K and you only want to record or stream in 1080p. You choose either of the other two selections here with various improvements in output quality. But that's entirely up to you to experiment with. Finally, set the FPS value, and for me that's 59.94, which is the standard for video in 60 FPS. Now let's briefly talk about the canvas size. Setting the canvas size is like setting a crop filter. For instance, crop factor, I'm sorry, not crop filter, crop factor. For instance, I was briefly using one of those Asus PG348Q ultra wide screen 3440 by 1440 panels. I, I used that a bit and then I sold it because I didn't really like that 21 by 9 ultra wide um, aspect ratio. But if I had set the canvas size to that panel's default resolution, the resulting video stream and recording would be in that 21 by 9 aspect ratio. And it would look way too odd for folks viewing it on YouTube. So I set the canvas size to 1440p or 2560 by 1440. And it essentially cropped the video output to just the center of that curved panel. I could still see the entire widescreen but end viewers would see a standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio video. They'd, mix the, they'd miss the extra outer section of my display. That's why you'd set a canvas size to something other than your display's resolution. Further, setting a scale factor here in this tab will apply to everything that's streamed or recorded unless you set another resolution in the output tab. Anything done in the output tab will override the scale setting here. Just remember that. Now the hotkeys. Again, this is entirely up to you. I have a toggle set to start and stop my stream is Alt F12. A toggle to start and stop my recording is Alt F9. I've not really experimented with the replay button, but I have that toggle set to Alt F10. And for, for my desktop audio, if I want to switch the mute on or off, let's say I'm, I'm doing something in the background and I don't need that sound sent to the stream or recorded, I've got my numpad 5 key set up for that. Then my microphones. Mic 1 is what I use for in-game VoIP, and I always use Push to Talk or PTT for any in-game VoIP, TeamSpeak, Discord, what have you. Always. In my opinion, if you're doing in-game VoIP and you have a constantly open or a voice-activated microphone, you're a cancer to gaming. No one needs to hear what's going on in your office while you're gaming. And if I'm recording, no one needs to hear any of that either. So I match up all of my various in-game, TeamSpeak, Discord, etc. PTT buttons with OBS. Mic 2 is used for streaming. In this case, I do want an open mic. You're sort of expected to have an open mic when streaming so that you can converse with your viewers. However, if I have the streaming mic open at the same time that I'm communicating in VoIP, the result on the stream or in the recording will be my voice twice. Therefore, when I PTT to talk to someone in game, I mute the stream mic. The stream will still hear my VoIP comms, but it'll only be heard once. That's why my mic's two's push to mute button are identical to the mic one's push to talk buttons. And finally, I have a mute toggle for all of my mics, and that's NumPad Plus. I leave everything in the Advanced tab set to default. We'll come back to the output in a moment, but for now, we're going to go to the mixer. You'll see I have my two mics and the desktop audio set up right here. I have mic 1 set to tracks 1 and 2. I have mic 2 just set to track 2. When we go back over to the output tab, that'll make a lot more sense. And of course, the desktop audio is set to all tracks. Back to the output tab. This is arguably the most important one of them and will have the greatest effect in your recordings and streams. In the stream tab, you can see that I'm using the NVENC H.264 encoder, which is the hardware encoder built into all newer NVIDIA GPUs. Refer to my aforementioned blog entry for more information on that. Now you can choose the H.264 software encoder if you want, but doing so will affect your in-game frame rate and the overall CPU load. So be careful with that one if you're streaming and recording on the same box. 
As it turns out, I am streaming and recording in the same box that I'm playing games on, so I'd rather use the hardware encoder. Remember I mentioned that setting a scale in the video tab would be overridden by the output tab? Well, that's where this section is. Checking this box and setting a newer resolution will override anything set previously. For audio, I have track two chosen for the stream. Track two has both my streaming mic and my VoIP mic in it. And down below all of this is the actual video uh, quality settings. And this is again something you'll need to experiment with. I have a constant bitrate set of 50 megabits per second. That means that my streaming upload and all my file outputs are 50 megabits per second, literally. Everything else is default except I uncheck the two pass encoding. It's not really necessary. In the recording sub tab, things look fairly similar. In fact, they're so similar that I'm using the stream encoder. All the settings that I'm using for the stream encoder get replicated here for the, for the uh, recording. I'm only using track one for recording. I don't want my stream mic sent to, to the recording, just my VoIP mic. You can actually see here where I'm recording every, everything too. On the audio side, this is perfectly and completely up to you. I set them the highest to 320. It'll increase the, the bit rate of the audio and potentially increase, increase the quality a little bit. Whether folks notice it on YouTube or not is another story entirely. But that's basically it. This works for me while I record to file and stream to YouTube. It put absolutely no load on my system CPU, nor does it affect my in-game frame rate in the least. I'm pleased with the quality of the video output in both the streams and the recordings. Now, if I do decide to start streaming to Twitch at some point in the future, I'll probably build another PC to do that. And that will require different settings altogether for OBS. But for now, this is it. And I hope this has helped you. But if you have any other questions, feel free to tweet them to me or ping me in the comment section below. Thanks for stopping by and I'll catch you later.